हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सरिता कुमार वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन जुओलॉजी एट आचार्य नरेंद्र देव कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग ऑन द मोड्यूल पैथोजेनिसिटी डायग्नोसिस एंड प्रोफाइल एक्सेस ऑफ वचरेरिया बैंक्रोफ्टाई फ्रॉम द पेपर पैरासिटोलॉजी आफ्टर लर्निंग दिस मोड्यूल यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मेडिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ वचरेरिया बैंक्रोफ्टाई know the various pathogenic effects caused by this parasite recognize the symptoms of the disease caused by filarial worm and you will be aware of the host immune response against the parasite have knowledge of genomics and proteomics of wachteria bancrofti and appreciate the various methods which can be used to prevent and control this parasite you have learned in the earlier module that wachteria bancrofti also known as filaria bancrofti is a thread like parasitic nematode of human beings it is commonly known as human filarial worm and is well known as the causative worm of the lymphatic filariasis also known as bancroftian filariasis or elephantiasis in which the lymphatic and genital organs get disabled either temporarily or permanently it is extremely painful and disfiguring disease the infection of which is generally attained during childhood but visible manifestations occur later in life wachteria bancrofti is a digenetic parasite in india it completes its sexual life cycle in human beings while its asexual life cycle is completed in culex pipiens fatigens mosquito in human beings it is present in the lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes of the body particularly in the groin regions where it causes several pathogenic problems this module is focused on the pathogenic symptoms caused by wachteria bancrofti both adults and larvae diagnosis of the parasite and possible preventive and control measures now let us first understand the various diseases caused by filarial worm wachteria primarily causes filariasis which can be of two kinds bancroftian filariasis and occult filariasis Bancroftian or classical filariasis also called wachteriasis is the most common disease and is caused by the adults of wachteria bancrofti it is generally asymptomatic and thus does not show any external signs of infection however it causes significant damage to the lymphatic system kidneys and the immune system of the body in case of severe infection human beings can exhibit various kinds of pathological symptoms which can lead to several problems you will study about these symptoms in details later in later in this module second kind of filariasis called occult filariasis is caused by microfilariae these microfilariae those circulate in the blood are not known to cause any pathogenic effects except in severe cases before you learn about diseases you should be aware that both males and females are equally susceptible to the filariasis nevertheless one sex or the other may be exposed to the infection more often depending upon the variations in local and cultural practices working conditions and differences in exposure to the insect vectors similarly individuals of all ages are susceptible to infections though it seems that infection rate increases with age this is because of the reason that during childhood and early adulthood clinical infection may not be evident the manifestation of acute and chronic filariasis usually occurs only after years of repeated and intense exposure to the infected vectors in endemic areas what are the various pathogenic effects of filarial worm depending upon the severity and the level of infection wachteria bancrofti can cause variable pathogenic effects these are primarily of the five types lymphangitis lymphadenitis elephantiasis hydrocele and chyluria let us study about each of these diseases in details first and foremost disease caused by wachteria bancrofti is called as lymphangitis as you have already learned that adults and larvae of wachteria bancrofti are present in the lymphatics of human beings if you observe the figure carefully you will see the worms present in lymphatics also you can observe dead microfilaria attached to the lymphatic wall their presence in the lymphatic channels results in the inflammation of the lymphatic system the inflamed areas are extremely painful 
and appear as cord-like swellings. This is called lymphangitis. What actually happens during lymphangitis? The movement of adult worms in the lymphatic system causes mechanical irritation to the lymphatic channels and pain. Sheathed microfilariae present in the lymphatic channels also release some metabolites resulting in certain reactions in the body. Not only this, the females which are fertilized secrete toxic fluids during birth of immature microfilariae. The foreign antigens again result in inflammatory reactions. Moreover, in case the worms die in the lymphatic system, they disintegrate resulting in the production of certain toxic products which may also cause different reactions. The release of toxic metabolites and products leads to reduced immunity of the infected lymphatic system. As a result, it can get secondary bacterial infections leading to other kinds of problems. Another disease caused by the infection of adult Vachuraria bancrofti is called lymphadenitis. It leads to the inflammation of the lymph nodes near the affected area, especially in the inguinal region. These nodes appear as soft masses which are covered by reddish tender skin. Generally, the swelling is not painful unless extremely inflamed. This disease is often accompanied by high fever for 3-5 days, increase in neutrophils and extensive infiltration of eosinophils. In this figure, you can observe an adult Vachereria bancrofti present in the lymph node of human beings. It is surrounded by large number of inflated eosinophils which indicates severe infection and inflammation. Another disease caused by Vachereria bancrofti is known as hydrocele. This affects the scrotal sacs of females and thus can be observed only in them. Hydrocel appears due to the frequent and recurrent attacks of Vachereria bancrofti. It results in the accumulation of fluid in the serous membrane of scrotal sacs surrounding the testes. How does it take place? Large number of microfilaria enter the fluid and inhibit the resulting in its accumulation. However, these larvae die soon because of unfavorable environment in the fluid. On the other hand, if an individual has chronic infection of Vachereria, it increases the swelling. Further, if the swelling is left untreated, it can lead to enormous growth of the scrotum as you can observe in the figure. Hydrocele is the most prevalent and highly painful manifestation of Bancroftian filariasis. In endemic areas, it is a major cause of impediment to mobility, disability, disfigurement, sexual burden, social stigma, and the source of direct and indirect economic loss causing family discord. It is more common in East Africa, Japan and China but less common in India. Elephantiasis is the most prominently visible and well-known disease caused by Vachereria bancrofti. As we learned earlier that the parasitic worms reside and accumulate in the lymph nodes. They increase in number greatly and thus block the flow of lymph. The affected part of the body has abnormal collection of protein-rich fluid in the interstitium. Consequently, the part swells, becomes edematous and enlarges enormously. Further, the edema makes it so solid that it looks like a tumor. Another problem created by the obstruction of lymphatics is the increase in protein content of the extravascular tissue. It rises the osmotic concentration of the extravascular fluid and thus results in the consequent retention of water and distension of the soft tissue. In addition, increase in the extravascular protein also stimulates proliferation of fibroblasts and the swelling of the affected extremity. You can observe in the figure the magnitude of swelling in the feet of an individual infected with Vachereria bank of type. Gradually, with increased severity and duration of infection, the skin surface of the affected individual becomes rough, dry, thick and papillomatous. Observe the pictures here carefully. You can see the wards and papillae on the skin which also have a rough, rough texture now. Because of this, body hairs also become rough and sparse. This condition usually occurs in the lower limbs and scrotal sacs of the individuals. It continues for years causing a lot of discomfort. It is common in India, China and Pacific but rare in West Africa. The common signs and symptoms of elephantiasis resulting in lymphedema thus include the first and foremost symptom of chronic swelling of an extremity. The edema occurs primarily in lower extremity 
though it can be observed in the upper extremity genitalia and other body parts. The disease also leads to fevers, chills, tiredness and weakness. Fatigue is often observed because of the enormous size and increased weight of the extremity. The elephant-like legs or other body parts cause awkwardness in public, disfigurement and severe impairment of everyday activities. Furthermore, it also increases the chances of bacterial and fungal infections and leads to recurrent cases of cellulitis, lymphangitis, fissuring, ulcerations and maybe varicose changes. Development of lymphodiva, however, can be categorized into different stages based on its severity. Grade 1, also called mild edema, involves the distal extremities such as forearm, hand, lower leg and foot. The change in perimeter is less than 4 cm and other tissue changes are not yet present. In the picture here, you can observe the mild edema in the right leg of the infective individual. This is the grade 2 lymphedema, also called moderate edema. It involves an entire limb or corresponding quadrant of the trunk. Difference in perimeter is now between 4 to 6 cm. Certain tissue changes such as pitting are clearly visible. See the increased edema in the picture of the leg of an infected individual leading to enlarged perimeter of the leg and obviously the increase in its weight. Next stage of lymphedema, grade 3, also called severe edema, shows unilateral lymphedema. As compared to previous stages, as you can also observe, the difference in perimeter is now more than 6 cm. This stage is characterized by significant alterations in the skin such as cornification, keratinization, formation of cysts and fistulae. Moreover, the skin starts to thicken and possesses increased skin folds. Last stage of lymphedema, called as grade 4, is gigantic edema. Also known as elephantiasis, this is the most severe stage of infection. As you can observe, this stage has huge extremities due to almost complete blockage of the lymph channels. Not only this, it can be extended to the face, knee, etc. The individual manifests thickened skin, deeper skin folds and petechial hemorrhage over tibia. The affected area may show huge elephantoid skin mass, multiple areas with hypopigmentation, that is loss of pigmentation, papillomatous changes and scarring. The individuals infected with filarial worm often passes milky white urine due to the presence of child. Child, you may be aware, is a milky fluid consisting of lymph and emulsified fats or free fatty acids. It is formed in the small intestine during digestion of fatty foods and taken up by the lymph vessels specifically known as lacteals through which it reaches blood. Apart from chyle, many people called chyle, the urine also contains fat particles, albumin and fibrinogen along with microfilariae and RBCs. Presence of only chyle in urine is called chyluria while presence of blood in urine with chyle is known as hematuria. Second category of filariasis known as occult filariasis is an uncommon disease. It is caused by only microfilaria of Wachteria bancrofti. The clinical manifestations of occult filariasis caused are similar to that observed in classical filariasis. The microfilariae block the lymph nodes and lymph vessels leading to the enlargement of that area. Further, liver and spleen also increase in size leading to the medical condition known as hepatosplenomegaly. A few other pathological symptoms associated with occult filariasis are glomerulonephritis that is inflammation of glomerulus and nephrons in kidney, endomyocardial fibrosis, arthritis that is joint pains and filarial infections of the breast. The most characteristic feature of occult filariasis is that though adult worms produce microfilaria continuously but they do not reach peripheral blood. Can you think of the reason? Actually, the microfilariae get destroyed in tissues itself and often calcified there. Observe the figure given here. These are all dead larvae which have been calcified in the lymph. This results in more blockages of lymph channels. Moreover, filarial antigen causes reaction in the body as a result of which large number of eosinophils gather around microfilariae. 
this results in the formation of granuloma which is filled with the pus cells occult filariasis though uncommon is more serious than classical filariasis you must be aware that the pathogenicity of a parasite is dependent upon the immune system and inflammatory responses of the host similar to any infection filarial infection also generates significant inflammatory immune responses in the human body which contribute to the development of symptomatic lymphatic obstruction the pathogenicity caused by filarial worm depends on the quantity of accumulating adult worms antigens in the lymphatics and the degree of host immune response scientists have demonstrated increased levels of immunoglobulin e and immunoglobulin g4 as an immune response to microfilariae these are secondary to the immune responses produced by t2 helper cells which are actually stimulated by the antigens of dead worms actually initially the filariasis disease does not show any symptoms this phase called asymptomatic phase of filariasis consist of high microfilariemia infection but why do individuals not exhibit any symptoms of infection can you guess the reasons this is because of the cytokine interleukin 4 suppressing activity of t1 helper cells in our immune system nevertheless the suppression activity can occur for several years until inflammatory reactions rises again in acute phase of filariasis antigens from female worms elicit inflammatory responses in human beings you will learn about these cells and role of details in the modules of immunology observe these figures carefully these figure represent the different kinds of immune response in the host body when infected with wisteria bancrofti you can easily observe the infiltration of neutrophils eosinophils and accumulation of giant cells around dead microfilaria Apart from these immune responses, exposure to parasite antigen during prenatal period is another important determinant in conferring greater immune tolerance to it. As a result, individuals from endemic areas often do not exhibit any symptoms until late in the disease when they have numerous worms in the body. On the other hand, non-immune emigrants tend to have more severe early clinical symptoms and rapid immune responses even during light infections lymphatic filarial parasites have also shown to contain rickettsia like wolbachia endosymbiotic bacteria this association has been recognized as a contributory factor to the inflammatory reaction seen in filariasis wolbachia has been found in the hypodermis of worms oocysts embryos and all the larval stages because of the fact that they play important roles in the development and biology of filarial parasites wolbachia species has been found to be a target for anti filarial chemotherapy now the question arises how does wolbachia play great role in the pathogenesis of filariasis let us try to understand these bacteria can be easily recognized by the host immune system as a result of which they induce antibody and inflammatory responses of the innate immune system with subsequent anti-inflammatory responses further they also elicit severe and systemic inflammatory responses mediated by the endotoxins released by worms after the treatment with the drugs and act as major trigger for neutrophilic granulocytes decline in bacteria number by use of antibiotics shows that they are required for normal fertility and development of the parasite and for the protection of the parasite from host immunity by now you have learned that filariasis is a very serious disease which develops very slowly in the body can we diagnose filariasis in time so that control measures can be taken against it yes filarial diagnosis in the human beings can be done by a variety of methods though earlier the diagnosis of infection depending on the presence of the parasite in blood keeping in mind the periodicity of microfilariae but now the diagnosis relies on a variety of techniques available Alternative methods based on detection of antibodies by immunodiagnostic tests did not prove satisfactory since they both failed to distinguish between active and past infections and had problems with specificity due to their cross reactivity with common gastrointestinal parasites and other organisms. 
First and foremost diagnostic tool for filariasis is microscopic examination. It is an inexpensive test that is based on the detection of microfilariae in the blood through microscopic examination of the peripheral blood smear. The microfilariae can also be observed in the chylus urine exudates of lymph varix and hydrocele fluid. The blood sample for microfilaria, however, needs to be taken during the night, generally between 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. due to the nocturnal periodicity of the microfilaria or it will produce a negative result. Moreover, microfilaria cannot be observed when the patient develops elephantiasis due to lymphatic obstruction and after lymphangitis due to the death of adult worms. Antigen detection in another diagnostic tool for filariasis. This assay, called as the circulating filarial antigen detection method, is considered the most accurate method for diagnosing the filariasis. Also regarded as the gold standard, it is an extremely sensitive and specific technique which detects the antigen of microfilariae circulating in the blood. Unlike in the previous test, the blood sample can be collected at any time of the day as the antigen circulates throughout the body continuously. Further, the test comes positive for not only those individuals who have microfilaremia, but also for amicrofileremic individuals with clinical manifestations of filariasis and for individuals who appear normal after effective treatment with drugs. The assay can be performed based on ELISA methodology or as a simple card called as immunochromatographic test. The amicrofileremic patients can generally be diagnosed only by CFA technique, but in the absence of antigen testing, the diagnosis of these infections can be made through other clinical symptoms. These symptoms include extremely high levels of eosinophilia, Extraordinary high levels of total serum immunoglobulins E, which are almost always in excess of 10,000 nanogram per milliliter. High levels of specific antifilarial antibodies, that is both immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin E. Further, detectable immunoglobulin G4 antibodies stimulated by the presence of active infection are also observed. Diagnosis of lymphatic filarial infection using conventional x-ray are rarely helpful because of the detectable changes in organs. However, in case of tropical eosinophilia, characteristic interstitial thickening and diffuse nodular mottling in the lung fields can be detected by x-rays. Next diagnostic method, which is not very convincing though, is ultrasound examination. The ultrasound of the lymphatics, especially breast and retroperitoneal lymphatics in women and scrotal lymphatics in men can expose rapidly moving adult worms. Another tool is biopsy of the lymph node which can be used to detect adult worms if the patient shows lymphadenopathy which may or may not be accompanied with lymphadenitis or lymphangitis. Nevertheless, this approach is rarely used as a diagnostic procedure. Today, genomics approach has become a commanding tool of bioinformatics being used to recognize and comprehend the structure and function of all the genes within an organism. Additionally, drug targets can be recognized using the genomics approach which can augment our information significantly in order to understand the genetic principles that regulate various essential functions for their survival. Also, it has been reported that since miRNAs are involved in various regulations and development process of nematodes, variety of genes can be identified through genomics which regulate or may take part in central role for miRNA processing. Though the full genome of another filarial parasite, Brugia malai, has been reported which is available at the recent release of NAM Base 4 database, researchers are still going on for Vachraria bancrofti. However, the complete empty genome of Vachraria bancrofti has been defined in 2012 by Ramesh and his co-workers through analysis of three isolates from India, Papua New Guinea and West Africa. The complete empty genome sequence reported provides new genetic markers for investigating phylogenetic and geographic relationships between isolates and assessing population diversity within endemic regions. The sequence polymorphism enables new strategies to monitor the progress of public health interventions to control and eliminate this important human parasite.
Several investigators have identified the novel drug targets for lymphatic filariasis. They have prepared the three-dimensional models of the structure and provided the molecular information of the respective proteins. The identified potential drug targets can be modeled using bioinformatics approach and their molecular function could be interrupted for effect against nematodes. The drugs can thus be designed against filarial worms using two kinds of approach. First approach is ligand-based drug designing. It is a popular method for drug discovery which provides crucial insights into the drug target legal interactions and helps us to understand the features and predict the structures of biologically active molecules. Using this technology, the drugs already available for lymphatic filariasis with their target protein can be restudied with 3D quantitative structural activity relationship and pharmacophore modeling. It would define the minimum essential structural characteristic possessed by a small molecule which could help in inhibiting the target. Several investigators have identified the novel drug targets for lymphatic filariasis. They have prepared the three-dimensional models of the structure and provided the molecular information of the respective proteins. The identified potential drug targets can be modeled using bioinformatics approach and their molecular function could be interrupted for effect against nematodes. The drugs can thus be designed against filarial worms using two kinds of approach. First approach is ligand-based drug designing. It is a popular method for drug discovery which provides crucial insights into the drug target legal interactions and helps us to understand the features and predict the structures of biologically active molecules. Using this technology, the drugs already available for lymphatic filariasis with their target protein can be restudied with 3D quantitative structural activity relationship and pharmacophore modeling. It would define the minimum essential structural characteristic possessed by a small molecule which could help in inhibiting the target. Second approach is structure-based drug designing or SBDD which is a rapidly growing technology relying upon the knowledge of the 3D structure of the target protein obtained from various techniques that is electron microscopy, NMR, X-ray crystallography, etc. which could further be analyzed for the possible inhibitor binding site identification based on which probable inhibitor can be identified or designed from the databases. These databases include Zinc database, Drug Bank, ChemBank, PubChem, Cambridge Structural Databases and other databases available at Ligand. Now you can see this flowchart which shows the various steps to formulate drugs against filariasis using ligand-based and structural-based approach. Can we prevent filariasis? How can we? As you know, this disease is transmitted to humans by mosquitoes. So the best way to prevent lymphatic filariasis is to avoid mosquito bites. The mosquitoes that carry the microscopic worms usually bite between the hours of dusk and dawn. How can we control mosquitoes? The control of mosquitoes is state specific. Different measures are adopted for adults and larval stages. Now various measures can be taken against mosquito adults. For example, we should not allow mosquitoes breed in the surrounding areas. For that, we should clear off bushes and shrubs whereas mosquitoes can breed. The houses and neighboring areas may be fumigated with insecticides such as pyrethroids, malathion, etc. to kill the mosquito adults. Sleeping under a mosquito net, insecticide treated mosquito net can protect us from mosquito bites. Further, using mosquito repellent on exposed skin between dusk and dawn is a well known measure. We can also kill adults by spraying insecticides inside the human dwellings. Further, the mosquito vats, coils and anti-mosquito cream can be used to repel the mosquitoes from biting. Covering exposed parts of the body with thick clothing is another way of protection. Similarly, we need to prevent mosquito breeding at the larval stage. For that, we don't have to let water collect in the surroundings, coolers, empty tires, etc. where larvae can breed. Swamps, lakes or ponds should be filled up to prevent their breeding. We need to cover or spray the water surface with oil such as kerosene, petroleum, etc. to inhibit larval respiration leading to their mortality. 
use of larvicides such as lindane, fenthion, etc. in the collected water can kill the mosquito larvae efficiently. Introduction of larvivorous fishes like gambusia, naiads of dragonfly and mayfly and cyclopoid copepods in water bodies can prevent mosquito breeding as all these feed on the mosquito larvae. Another preventive method of lymphatic filariasis is to control Bacteria bancrofti themselves. Therefore, vermicides can be distributed in the filariasis prone areas which can kill the worms in time. One should visit doctor and take timely treatment. Educating high risk groups such as school age children, women and special occupation groups about sanitation and hygiene is utmost important. If after adopting all measures, still infection with Vacheria bancrofti takes place, it can be treated with various drugs. Now you can see in this table, various drugs are summarized and their target sites are summarized. The common drugs used are albendazole, diethylcarbamazine citrate, that is DEC, ivermectin, benzimidazole, levomazole, piprazine, mebendazole, and imidazole. The strategy to eliminate filariasis can be categorized into two components. First component is the interruption of transmission, which will stop the spread of infection. The transmission of the disease can be stopped only after mapping of the regions endemic to lymphatic filariasis so that community-wide mass treatment programs can be implemented for the treatment of affected or at-risk population. Often these programs are based on annual administration of single and simultaneous doses of two drugs for at least five years. First, 6 mg per kilogram of body weight, DEC, that is diethylcarbamazine citrate, along with 400 mg albendazole, or 150 micrograms per kilogram of body weight, ivermectin, plus 400 mg albendazole. Alternatively, common table salt or cooking salt is fortified with DEC and advised to include in the diet for a period of one year. It is considered equally effective community-wide regimen in the endemic regions. Certain researchers have explored various enzymes which may act as probable and novel drug targets for lymphatic filariasis. For example, Sharma et al. in 2013 have explored many drugs. They have investigated their mode of action, however, they haven't identified their molecular structure. Various targets include the enzymes critical for biochemical pathways, expressed proteins, accessible to the surface of the parasite, the druggable molecular targets, and specific nematode proteins with unknown functions. So students, let's now summarize what we learn in this module. Vacheria bancrofti is one of the most dreadful nematodes, largely confined to the tropical and subtropical regions of the world, affecting more than 120 million people. It is an endoparasite and is commonly found in the lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes of human beings, particularly in the groin regions. Primarily, adults of Vacheria bancrofti are the cause of disease in human beings, whether dead or alive. The disease is commonly called Bacheriasis. Various pathogenic effects caused by filarial worm are lymphangitis, lymphadenitis, elephantiasis, hydrocele, and chyluria. In India, elephantiasis is the most common pathological effect. Occult filariasis caused by microfilariae leads to glomerulonephritis, endomyocardial fibrosis, arthritis, and filarial infection of the breast. Filarial infection generates significant inflammatory immune responses in the human body, which contribute to the development of symptomatic lymphatic obstruction. Presence of microfilaria in human blood can be diagnosed by microscopic examination of the infected blood or fluids, antigen detection, clinical features, and biopsy of inflamed lymph node. Though the full genome of Vacheria bancrofti has still not been identified, the complete empty genome of Vacheria bancrofti has been defined by researchers. Several investigators have identified and prepared the three-dimensional models of the structure of novel drug targets for 
LF and provided the molecular information of the respective proteins. The disease and infection caused by Vetraria can be prevented by adopting chemical, mechanical and biological measures to control mosquito vector and their larvae. Infection with Vetraria bancrofti can be treated with a variety of drugs. Mel W and Mel B, dimethyl carbamazine, albendazole with ivermectins and enbeldazole with diethyl carbamazine and targeting its symbiotic bacteria, Bulbacchia. World Health Organization has reported filariasis as one of the neglected diseases prevalent throughout the world. They have recommended global program to eliminate lymphatic filariasis. Various pathogenic effects caused by vetraria and microfilaria need to be controlled in time as once the infection reaches elephantiasis stage, it becomes impossible to control. I hope you must have understood the biology and medical importance of this important parasite. Thank you.